فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're in the explanation of the book ثلاثة الأصول written by الشيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى We've previously taken مقدمة introductions and we took three introductions Now we are going into the reason why the author actually wrote this book. What this book is about now. We're actually going into the book. All of that which we took before, it was important matters which the author wanted you to <coughs> understand, the author wanted you to comprehend, and he wanted you to have with you before you go into the book because it's going to be very important for you. But this book, the reason why the author wrote it is is to clarify three foundations. And these foundations are Masailul Qabr. The questions that are going to be put to every one of us in the grave. Marrabbuk وَمَا نَبِيُّكْ وَمَا دِينُكْ So, مَا رَبُّكْ وَمَا دِينُكْ وَمَا نَبِيُّكْ And the answer of each one is going to be found in the book, inshaAllah ta'ala. So, from this point onwards, inshaAllah ta'ala, until the end of the book is an answer it's a jawabun ala hadhihi al-as'ilati al-thalathi it's an answer to these three questions until the end of the book anybody who has true knowledge and comprehension and understanding of those three questions then without a shadow of a doubt, insha'Allah ta'ala, kana hariyan an yuthabbata inda su'ali, he will be made firm and able to answer those questions in the grave, insha'Allah ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, yuthabbitu Allahu alladheena amanu bil qawli thabiti fil hayati dunya wa fil akhirah, وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ الظَّالِمِينَ وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He makes firm الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who have knowledge And He makes them firm بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Allah makes them firm in this world with correct words وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ And in the grave On the day of judgment وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ And Allah misguides الظَّالِمِينَ The transgressors وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ And Allah does as He wills سبحانه وتعالى There's a hadith الإمام البخاري narrated it three five, Sorry, five places Imam al-Bukhari narrated it five places in his Sahih. 
and Imam Muslim only narrated it one place in his Sahih. On the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha marfu'an. That when the question of the grave is asked to a group of people, their response, instead of it being the answers that were needed from them, they respond by saying, Ha, ha, la adri. سَمِعْتُ النَّاسَ يَقُولُونَ شَيْئًا فَقُلْتُهُ He will respond by saying, or she will respond by saying, هَا هَا لَا أَدْرِي I don't know. I heard the people say something, I just said it. And the scholars they took from this, and they used this as an evidence, استدل العلماء They used this statement, this hadith, على أن التقليد لا يصح blind following is not permitted in these three questions the person has to have knowledge so if you ask من ربك you need to know ما دينك you need to know ومن نبيك you need to know And the Shaykh Rahimahullah, Shaykh Al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, after each one, he mentions with it, Yadkuru Dalila min al Qur'an, he mentions evidences from the Qur'an. And in our previous explanation at the beginning, when we were explaining, we spoke about that the believer has to leave of blind following. And he has to have evidence. He has to use evidences for what he knows, for what he believes. But the question that one can ask right now and say is, do I have to know the evidences from the top of my head? Are you saying that every Muslim has to memorize Usul Thalatha and Thalatha Til Usul? The answer is no. But what is meant by that the person has to leave blind following is, is that you have to know the evidence, you have to know the evidence, and you have to have heard of the evidence, even if it's once in your life. And then you believe in it. You believe in that which the evidence has told you. And then if you become steadfast on that. Until your death comes to you. And then you become a believer. So. Istimrar. Istihraru dalili. Wal istidlal. La yushtaratu. To be consistently. In memory of the evidence is not a condition. But what is wajib upon each and every one of us is is that you know the truth and the correct answer for each and every one of these questions. And you know the evidence for it whether you paraphrase it, whether you... Nah, you have to have an overall understanding. And that's why it's important to teach the sigar, the youngsters, the young kids, well, atfal, the children, the likes of this book. So that when the child grows old and he becomes big, he knows the evidences, he knows the thing that he's he's asked and the evidence for each and every one of them. The author, Rahimahullah, he started by saying 
فإذا قيل لك ما الأصول الثلاثة التي يجب على الإنسان معرفتها فقل معرفة العبد ربه ودينه ونبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم As you can see the author has chosen to author the book in a way which is known as tariqatu as-su'ali wal jawab question and answer And the reason why the author took this method in authoring his book in a question and an answer manner is because هي نافعة It's beneficial في تقرير المعلومات وسرعة فهمها If you want the information to solidify itself in your mind and to quickly understand it and that when the question is thrown at the student of knowledge in a question manner it is easier for him or it's He's more alert and feels that there's a connection between him and the person who's teaching him. Whereas, if it just becomes the lesson, ilqa' mustamirra, that the teacher just keeps flowing and he keeps going and he just keeps reading, that could possibly lead to قَدْ يَكُونُ مُمِلًّا It can be, it can bring tiredness and boredom. Especially لا سيما إذا طالت الوقت. Especially if the time is going on for long and the class is actually an hour or two hours. So the Sheikh رحمه الله he chose this method, which is specifically known as الطريقة الحوارية. It's called the what? الطريقة الحوارية. And it's a. It's in a conversational manner where basically the person who's teaching asks a question and the student responds back. Or even the teacher asks a question, a rhetorical question, and he's the one who answers the question. And this, my beloved brothers and sisters, is not a method taken from the West but rather it's a prophetic manner and it's a prophetic tradition and it's a prophetic methodology in teaching our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam he used to teach the companions by asking them a question atadruna man al-muflis when the prophet said to muad atadri ma haqqu allah ala al-ibad wa ma haqqu al-ibad ala allah The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said to the companions, Do you know what day it is today? Hajjatul Wada'. All of that was a method so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can get their attention. So the Shaykh chose to use that method. Another thing that the Shaykh Rahimahullah does and you're going to see inshaAllah Ta'ala is he mentions, pay attention, he mentions the usul thalatha ijmalan. He, mention, he mentions it, first of all, in a very comprehensive manner. And then, thumma bada'a fi tafsiliha. And then after that, he goes into details and details and details. And this is minat turuq al jayida. It's from the good manners and the good methodology of teaching. It's a very good manner of teaching. Because the person, a student of knowledge, if he understands something ijmalan in a very overall, gener- generic manner, tatalla'at ila ma'rifatihi tafsila, then it starts to desire in wanting to know it in more details. If it's given an overall, and in a generic manner, in a comprehensive manner, he would want to then after that know it in more details. And 
And what the scholars in Ilmul Ma'ani, the Bulagha, they mention is that the people of Balagha is at tafsilu ba'dal ijmali min maqasid al Bulagha. Going in details after you've spoken generally, going in details is actually an eloquent manner. لذلك our مشايخ and our teachers that taught us for example when we studied when we study books of fiqh and madhab al-shafi'i is what we were taught I remember my teacher before he enters the chapter of مثلا كتاب الطهارة or كتاب الصلاة or كتاب الزكاة كتاب what he will do is that we're studying for example كتاب المنهج by الإمام النووي رحمه الله the Shaykh, before he enters that chapter, he will give you an overall about it and what you need to know. And then he will enter the chapter. When you have huh? when you have a generic and an overall and comprehensive manner of that chapter, he then goes into the chapter. Because now it's going to be tafsil and more details. But you have an overall, you're ready to take it into details. And that's a very good manner and a very good way of teaching. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he started by saying, فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ If it said to you, فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ If it said to you, مَا الْأُصُولُ الثَّلَاثَةُ What are the three fundamentals التي يجب What are the three fundamentals which are obligatory على الإنسان on a person معرفتها in knowing it If somebody comes up to you and says to you What are the three fundamentals or the three foundations that every single person has to know. If somebody asks you, what is it? What are the three things that everyone has to know? The Sheikh said to you, Faqul, respond to that person by saying, Faqul, say to them. And this is the first asal. This is the first of the three. This هذا هو الأصل الأول. What is it? معرفة العبد ربه the slave knowing his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here what we have to understand is, the Sheikh used ma'rifatul abdi rabbahu. He used the word rabbahu. And what we know is knowing your Rabb is something even the Mushriki Quraysh came with. They knew their Rabb. So what's meant by knowing your Rabb? Because there are many evidences in the Quran that show that the Mushrikeen they knew their Rabb and they came with the Rububiyyah that was upon them. As Allah said in Surah to Yunus, Ayah 31. قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ that's Urububiyya. فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهِ They will say to you Allah. So Allah said to the Prophet, Say to them, مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Who is the one who provides to you from the Sama? وَالْأَرْضِ and from the earth. أَمَّلْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ Who is the one who controls and possesses and owns your hearing? وَالْأَبْصَارَ and you're seeing. وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّةِ Who is the one who brings from the dead and alive? And the opposite. 
Who is the one who controls everything? Allah says to you, they will respond by saying, فَسَيَقُولُونَ Allah. Allah does all of that. So, the mushrikun, في كل زمان, every time, لم يكونوا ينازعون في توحيد الله جل وعلا في ربوبيته. They were never, ever arguing in the tawheed of Allah, Allah's oneness in his rububiyyah. They were never arguing about that. So what's the explanation of ma'rifatul abdi rabbah? What does the author mean by this? How about we leave it with the author himself to explain it to us? How about we leave it with the author himself to explain it to us? If you go to the first volume, <coughs> page 106 to 107, the book at durar al-Saniyya fi al najdiya which is, the, a compil- uh, is a compilation of the works of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab and his grandsons. And their fatawat and their questions and their answers, everything. One a question was directed at him, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah ta'ala, Shaykh al Islam, about the difference between al rububiyyah and al uluhiyya. The author responded as follows He says, This is a great matter. وذلك أن there is أن الربوبية إذا أطلقت when the ربوبية is unrestrictedly used أو إذا أفردت أو إذا أفردت فإنه يدخل فيها الألوهية الألوهية والأنترت if it's mentioned unrestrictedly or if it's independently used الألوهية will fall under it لأن الربوبية تستلزم الألوهية وتوحيد الربوبية يستلزم توحيد الإلهية والألوهية تتضمن الربوبية because ربوبية necessitates ألوهية and ألوهية consists in it الربوبية so if you believe in ألوهية you've already believed in ربوبية and if you believe in rububiyyah, then it necessitates and it requests from you because it's impossible that you come with the rububiyyah and then you don't want to affirm the uluhiyyah. You're contradicting yourself. So from this, the Shaykh Rahimahullah is trying to say to us, and there's another place in his Dura Rasaniyah, if you look at the second volume, page 64 to 65, he says the following. He says, إِنَّهُ مَا مِنَ الْكَلِمَاتِ It's from the words, التي إذا اجتمعت افترقت وإذا افترقت اجتمعت كلفظ الإيمان والإسلام والفقير والمسكين That these words الربوبية and الألوهية are from the words which fall under the principle of if they come together they separate and if they separate they come together such as Islam and Iman and Iman and Islam and also الفقير and المسكين Okay. <coughs> so if I use rububiyah and there's in that context I'm not mentioning uluhiyah, then rububiyah takes the meaning of uluhiyah and rububiyah. But if they're if both of them are mentioned in the same context, then uluhiyah means something different and rububiyah means something different. So what we've now learned is ma'rifatul abdi rabbahu here is meant by ma'rifatul abdi ma'budahu the slave knowing his ma'bud the one he he worships alone <coughs> and if you look at many places in the quran and you analyze many places verses in the quran Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he tells the disbelievers to affirm rububiyah. Are you there? But pay attention here. 
the scholars, they took two paths regarding those verses. Those verses that mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the disbelievers to believe in rububiya, the scholars are of two, of two, two, what do you call it, paths, which both of them are the same, no problem. I mean, they come together, finally. The first one is that it is from the angle of, huh? it is from the angle of that if you guys have come with Rububiyah, why are you contradicting yourselves? Why don't you come with Uluhiyah? If you're saying Allah wa ta'ala is the only king, Allah is the only sustainer, Allah is the only provider, and, that all, and all of that is Tawheedu, Ar-Rububiyah. If you're affirming all of that, if you're affirming all of that, why don't you want to worship him alone? Which is, that's why Allah wa ta'ala uses Tawheed al-Rububiyah as a what? He uses the Tawheed of al-Rububiyah as uh, common grounds, if you could say so. For example, Allah Taala says in Surah Al-Luqman, Ayah 25, وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ Also Allah Taala says, after it, after that, he mentions that, قُلْ أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَرَادَنِيَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍّ هَلْ هُنَّ كَاشِفَاتُ ضُرِّ أَوْ أَرَادَنِي بِرَحْمَةٍ هَلْ هُنَّ مُمْسِكَاتُ رَحْمَةِ قُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَيْهِ يَتَوَكَّلُ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ سورة زمر آية 38 نعم Also if you look at قوله تعالى The statement of Allah in سورة آل عمران آية 80 Allah تبارك وتعالى says وَلَا يَأْمُرَكُمْ أَن تَتَّخِذُوا الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ أَعْرْبَابًا بالكفر بعد إذ أنتم مسلمون. The word arbab in here is used, but it's, ma- it's meant by ma'budaini, two ma'buds, two worship, two things that you need to worship. Also, the statement of Allah at اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله. The word arbab is used here, right, in Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 31, right? اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله. Arbab is used, right? What is meant by arbab and min duni is actually ma'budaini. Two, uh, two things that you worship. Because the hadith of Adi ibn Hatim, ibn Abdullah ibn Sa'ad al-Ta'i, Abu Wahb, Sahabi al-Jaleel. And he was from the leader of the people of Ta'i, al-Jahiliya and Islam. <laughs> Adi ibn Hatim radiallahu ta'ala, when he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna lam na'buduhum, we never worship them. Huh? But then the Prophet ﷺ, what did he say to him? أَلَمْ يُحِلُّ لَكُمُ الْحَرَامَ فَأَحْلَلْتُمُوهُ أَلَمْ يُحَرِّمُ لَكُمُ الْحَلَالَ فَحَرَّمْتُمُوهُ قَالَ بَلَى فَقَالَتْ فَتِلْكَ عِبَادَتَهُ فَتِلْكَ عِبَادَتُهُمْ The Prophet said, this is the worship. فَتِلْكَ عِبَادَتُهُمْ You worship them. But the ayah mentions, اتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ so what we learned from here then is that it can be used in that meaning. So one mana is what, brothers? One of the manners that it's used for is actually to find common grounds with them. Are you there? And the second one is that huh? it's actually interchangeable. It's actually interchangeable, just like I mentioned, they are from the words that are uh, So you can actually interchangeably use them. So when Allah is actually telling them uh, ayat which you see am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in am humul khaliqun am khalaqu samawat so ayat when Allah is telling them rububiyah and is looking for common grounds in rububiyah it's actually the rububiyah here means uluhiyah. Okay? It doesn't actually mean rububiyah. Does that make sense? So that's two that's two ways of approaching about approaching it. Okay? So how, what did I what did I mention? There were two what reasons why it gets used. The first one is it's called from the angle of istilzam, right? Min babi, min babi al istiz al istilzam, because meaning rububiyati tastelzim al uluhiya. And the second one is bataratan bil qasdi, intention wise. This is actually it. The Sharia is actually intending that to mean that it intends uluhiya. In terms of what? Uluhiya. <coughs> and we've mentioned that. And we've actually 
spoken about that. So the Sheikh Rahimahullah, he says, um, uh, uh, he says, Mal usul, usul thalath, uh, Mal ما الأصول الثلاثة التي يجب على الإنسان معرفتها فقل معرفة العبد ربه أوكي معرفة العبد the slave knowing ربه his lord the word معرفة the word معرفة is actually a synonym of the word العلم knowledge but that's regarding the creation. And that's the majority of the times. Ghaliban. Majority of the times. Pay attention. Allah Ta'ala, you don't use the word ma'rifah for him. Allah used ilm for him. As for the creation, you use ma'rifah and ilm interchangeably. Okay? And they're synonyms to one another. Allah, as for... As for Allah, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ يُوصَفُ بِالْعِلْمِ Allah, when you're describing him, you describe him with the knowledge. وَلَا يُوصَفُ بِالْمَعْرِفَةِ You can't describe Allah by saying معرفة. The re Why can't we say it for Allah then? This is the question. The reason is because الْعِلْمِ knowledge قَدْ لَا يَسْبِقُهُ جَهْلٌ Knowledge, not necessary, does ignorance have to come before it. Okay? When you say ilm, it doesn't necessarily mean that ignorance came before it. بينما المعرفة but as for معرفة يسبقها جهل جهل is always what came before it. لذلك عرف الشيء بعد أن كان جاهلا به the person came to know a matter after he was ignorant about it. Whereas knowledge, قد لا يسبق جهل به. Ignorance doesn't necessarily have to go before it, and that's why. ولهذا يوصف الله جل وعلا بالعلم ولا يوصف ولا يوصف بالمعرفة. And because of that, Allah تبارك وتعالى we use for him علم knowledge, and we don't use for him معرفة. And another reason why we can't use it for Allah Taala is because the word ma'rifa has been used in the Quran, but in a rebuking manner. Whereas, amal ilmu fa'ata fil Quran mamduhan. As for knowledge, it came in the Quran in a praiseworthy manner. Allah said in Subhanahu wa Ta'ala Surah Al-An'am ayah 20 Alladhina atainahum al-kitab ya'rifunahu kama ya'rifuna abna'ahum alladhina khassiru anfusahum fahum la yu'minun Allah describes them here with what ma'rifa knowledge uh, ma'rifa understanding and he tells them that their their ma'rifa lam tanfa'uhum it didn't benefit them ya'rifuna ni'mat Allah they know the blessings of Allah thumma yunkirunaha and they reject it. Whereas knowledge in the Quran is being praised. Whereas ma'rifa فَرُبَّمَا كَانَ فِيهَا نُعُوا ذَمِّ لَهَا As for ma'rifa, there might be a form of huh? <laughs> disparagement. Huh? But then that's of course not لَيْسَ عَلَىٰ إِطْلَاقِي It's not unrestricted by the way. There are times when ma'rifa is praised. <laughs> because if you look at the evidences that show you un, it's not unrestricted is the hadith of Imam Muslim Ibn Hajjaj Ibn Muslim Al-Qushayriyu al Naysaburiyu the author of the Sahih who was born in Naysabur and he went to many different lands he took knowledge from Imam Ahmed and he was very close and he studied and he took knowledge from Imam Al-Bukhari Rahimahullah In some of the turuq of the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, when the Prophet was sending him to Yemen, some of the turuq, some of the narrations that have come, that the Prophet ﷺ said to him, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ 
إلى أن يعرف الله. Let it be the first thing which you call them to أن يعرف الله that they know Allah تبارك وتعالى. فإنهم عرفوا الله because if they know Allah فأخبرهم tell them أن الله فرض عليهم خمس صلوات that Allah made obligatory on them what? Five daily prayers. <coughs> so this wording was used what? إلى أن يعرف الله was used. So the ma'rifa is not always مذموم. Okay? ليس على إطلاقها. It's not unrestrictedly. But it has come. It been spoken about in a bad way, in a bad manner. <coughs> and the usage of the author here, ma'rifatul abdi rabbahu, is a good usage. Because it goes hand in hand with this narration of Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Ila ya'rifullah, that they know Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. That the person knows Rabbahu, his Lord. And also, that the person knows Wadinahu. The wow here goes back to what? Ma'rifatul Abdi Dinahu. That's what it goes back to. That the slave knows his religion. Also, when Nabi Yahu goes back to the world, goes back to Ma'rifatul Abdi Nabi Yahu Muhammadan Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that the slave, he knows his Prophet Muhammadan Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these, also, these three fundamentals. The Sheikh is going to go in details with them. As he's, now what he's done is he's given you a generic. Each one he's going to go in by itself and explain it and explain it and explain it and go into details. So we're not going to go ahead of the Sheikh. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Now he's going to yufassil. <coughs> so what was the general point that he gave you? The first point that he gave you is that the slave has to have and keep with him is what? He has to know معرفة العبد ربه ودينه ونبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Those three. <coughs> now the Sheikh رحمه الله, he's gonna go into what? He's gonna go into details of each one. Let's go to the first one now. This is the first one now. فإذا قيل لك if it said to you مَنْ رَبُّكَ Who is your Lord? فَقُلْ Respond And say رَبِّيَ اللَّهُ My Lord is Allah الَّذِي رَبَّانِي The one who cultivated me The word رَبَّانِي Is تَرْبِيَ Cultivated me You say Rabbahu Tarbiyatan. Ma'ana Tarbiyah, that's what it means. And Tarbiyah means what? At Tadrijul Murabba. Fi Masa'idil Kamali. Kulu Kamalin Bihasarihi. He's cultivating, nurturing something from when it was little, from when it was small, and making it into bigger and better. <coughs> Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah. Alladhi the one. Rabbani, he cultivated me. <coughs> he cultivated me. Rabbani, he cultivated me. Wa Rabba, and he cultivated Jami al alamina the whole universe the 
بنعمته with his blessings and from the greatest thing Allah tabarak wa ta'ala called the greatest tarbiya the greatest cultivation in which Allah cultivated mankind is and ba'atha lahum ar-rusula that Allah sent messengers for them يُعَلِّمُونَهُمْ that teaches them وَيُرْشِدُونَهُمْ that guide them إِلَى مَا يُقَرِّبُهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى to that which will bring them closer to Allah and that is and that is وَهَذِهِ أَعْظَمُ نِعْمَةٍ that's the greatest blessing Allah says in the Quran قُلْ say to them Muhammad بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا هو خير مما يجمعون <coughs> سورة يونس آية 58 قل say to them بفضل الله with the blessings of Allah ورحمته and his mercy فبذلك with that be happy فليفرحوا be happy هو خير مما يجمعون and the greatest نعمة أعظم النعمة المزداد the greatest blessing that Allah تبارك وتعالى had poured on us is هي إرسال الرسل sending messengers to us and the messengers came and cultivated the people nurtured them نعم The tarbiyah is of different types and it comes in different forms. There's tarbiyah to al-ajsam, the cultivation of one's physique. There's the tarbiyah to al-gharaiz, passions, emotions and feelings. Tarbiyah to al-fikri, nurturing a person's mindset. Tarbiyah to al-aqal. Nurturing a person's intellect. All of that, Allah Tabarak wa Taala has blessed mankind with. And if you look at the remaining other creations of Allah Tabarak wa Taala, you will find. That Allah has used that method of tadrij tarbiyah. The world, if you look at it today, science, scientists are saying that it's going from stages to stages. Sahih. But the way Allah is doing it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for each one is bima yunasibuha, the way that befits it. As Allah says in Surah Al Qasas, Ayah 68. وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ ويختار. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he creates whatever he wills and he chooses. <coughs> but the word that was used was what? وَرَبُّكَ Your Lord. But there's another meaning in the word rububiyah. And that's the one which is to believe that Allah is your khaliq. The creator of everything alone. And he is the Razzaq alone. And he is the Mudabbir al-Amr alone. And he is Qahir, Dhul Mulk. The one that has ownership and he's the king. And all the other meanings that are in Rububiyyah. And that's the one the author, Rahimahullah, intends here. The Shaykh Rahimahullah, he says, Fakul say, Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah, Alladhi the one, Rabbani who cultivated me, Wa Rabba Jami' al-Alamina, and he cultivated the all the universe, Bi-ni'matihi, he 
cultivated with his blessings. And he is the one I worship alone. He is Ma'bud, the one I worship alone. <coughs> what does he mean? He, who, 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 he is the one I worship alone. It's because since he is the only Khaliqun, Raziqun, Mudabbirun, Malikun, he is the only one then who deserves to be worshipped alone. In other words, the Shaykh is going in correlation with, and he's, a, he's affirming what's in the Qawluhu Ta'ala, Surah Al Furqan, Ayah 3. Allah says, وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ آلِهَا They took besides Allah, Aliha, idols. لَا يَخْلُقُونَ شَيْءًا They don't create anything. وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ And they are the created ones. وَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ And they can't even, they don't have for themselves, they can't bring for themselves ضَرًّا any harm. وَلَا نَفْعًا and any benefits. وَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ And they don't possess, they don't control موت and death. وَلَا حَيَاتًا And life. وَلَا نُشُورًا And the resurrection. <coughs> they don't. Seven characteristics in the ayah that's been mentioned. And each and every one of those characteristics are seven deficient characteristics that are not present in the idols. And because of those characteristics missing from them, it shows that they are not ilah. And that they should not be worshipped. <coughs> Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 191. What does Allah say? Are you going to associate partners with Allah? مَا لَا يَخْلُقُ That which does not create. وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ And they're the ones that are created. This is istifham, tawbiq, wa taqri'. Allah is rebuking. This interrogation is a rebuking form. It's coming in a rebuking form. So when the Sheikh says, وَرَبَّانِي وَرَبَّا جَمِيعَ الْعَالَمِينَ بِنِعْمَتِهِ وَهُوَ مَعْبُودِي He's the one what? I worship alone. Because he's the one who deserves that. He's my Rabb. He's a Khaliq, a Raziq, a Mudabbir, a Malik. Right? ليس لي معبود سواه I have no other one I worship besides him سبحانه وتعالى Now the Sheikh is going to give you evidence for that now <coughs> والدليل the evidence the evidence for what the evidence for أن الله تعالى هو المستحق للعبادة that Allah is the one who deserves to be worshipped for what reason, Lakin? Why is he the one who deserves to be worshipped? Because he is a murabbiyan li jami' al alameen. He's a murabbi. For what? For the whole universe. Are you with me? So the author start. he brought the uh, evidence for the first of the three. And the evidence is the Dalla Shaykhu. The evidence that the Sheikh used is Alhamdu Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdu praise is for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the universe. Alhamdu. <coughs> the scholars they said that the word Alhamdu. Is actually all of alhamd, all of praise. So it means huwa kullu hamdin, every praise, because the alif and lam here is istighraq, they said. Istighraq and wa alhamd. In other words, it means every hamdin which is present. How. كل حمد موجود أو وجد أو يوجد every praise that's present or that's found all of them is for him سبحانه وتعالى what does حمد mean حمد means 
Wasfullahi to describe Allah bisifatil kamal. It means to describe Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with complete characteristics. That's what hamd means. As for some of the scholars saying, yeah, as for some people saying that the thana, thana bi sifatil kamal, that's that's what hamd means. Some scholars they say that they say alhamdu means thana bi sifatil kamal. That's wrong, because what we find is in the hadith of Abu Hurairah, which is the Sahihain. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Hamadani abdi, right? And athna alayya abdi. And they are separated. Alhamdu praises, all of praises to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Lillahi. Lillahi. That lamb is called lamb. Lamb al istihqaq. Lamu istihqaq deserves. He deserves every praise. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mustahiqan lillahi jalla wa ala. Deserving to him. Because the lamb sometimes can be what? It can either be lil, it can be lamu al mulk, the lamb of ownership. And that only happens like in Lamul Mulki only comes when the when what the, what's before it is it's a specific thing. Are you there, brothers? It's a specific thing. But what is before it, if it's not ayan, if it's not ayn, some particular thing, and it's just a meaning that's before it. If what's before it is a meaning. Then the scholars they say this is istihqaq. For example, when I say ad-daru li fulan, dar is it an ayn or is it a ma'na? It's an ayn, it's a particular thing. So that lam in ad-daru li fulan, that lam is called lam al mulk. Okay? That lam is called lam al mulk, a mulk, ownership. <coughs> but if I say, for example, Al Fakhru li Fulan, praises for, for so and so. Now the lab here does not mean what? It's not Milkiya. Naam. So since alhamdu is ma'na, then the lamb here is istihqaq. فَكُلُّ حَمْدِ الْمُسْتَحِقُّ لِلَّهِ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the one who deserves to be worshipped subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَانِ مِنْ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشَدُّ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ